a great day, my dear students in ICT-1. So in this video, I will be discussing to you our topics in the basic concepts of computer. So this video will cover the uh, elements and the components of the computer system. So let me now start with the discussion. I hope you can go along, follow along with me as I discuss to you our first topic in this uh, course. Okay, so it will be all about the basic concepts of computer. So I believe that all of you are already familiar with this uh, technology and are actually used to using this in your uh, online class already, in your online learning. But anyhow, I just would like to have a recall about the basic uh, concepts of this uh, course. So let's first recall the definition of the meaning, I mean, uh, the meaning of the computer. So again, when we say computer, it is an electronic device that manipulates information or data. It has the ability to store, retrieve, and process data. So we use a computer to type documents, send emails, play games, browse the web, and other activities that uh, we perform nowadays. So it is also used to edit or create spreadsheets, presentations, videos, uh, photo editing, and uh, other things that uh, we do in order for us to be productive and uh, creative at some point. The computer system has actually various elements and the components. So at this time, I just would like you to be familiar with the elements of the computer systems. So it is composed of the what we call hardware, software, people, procedure, data, and connectivity. There are actually more elements Okay, but uh, I just uh, name six elements. Let's move on. So, in the elements, uh, this time, I just would like you to be familiar with each element. But uh, in our next videos, we shall be discussing deeply on, <laughs> on each part, particularly the hardware, because we have so much to talk about in the hardware part of the, the computer system. So when we speak of hardware, it is any part of your computer that has a physical structure, such as the keyboard or mouse. So hardware consists of input devices and output devices that make a complete computer system. So a hardware are actually classified into four. We have this what we call input devices, output devices, central processing unit, and storage. So we have here the illustration of the uh, classifications of the hardware. So those uh, input devices are the part of the hardware which uh, we use to facilitate the introduction of data and information into the system. So every time we type, okay, every time we enter data to the computer, we actually use the input devices. So in a little later, we shall be uh, identifying those devices under the input classification. So input. Another is the output devices. So those devices are used in order to generate the results from the computer. So they are uh, examples are the monitor, the, the printer, the speakers, because output devices facilitate the extraction of processed information from the system. It generates the what we call results or meaningful information. So another classification is the central processing unit, which we consider as the brain of the computer, which takes or that takes the inputs, process them, and then outputs the results. So every time we input data, it's the central processing unit that does the, the work in order for it to be outputted or to be to generate results. 
And then we have the last classification. This is the what we call storage. So every time we process, okay, every time the data are being processed by the system, uh, the storage uh, part are actually working already. Okay, so the mere fact that you open your screen or start working with your document, although you are not yet saving that uh, document which you are working on, the storage is already the performing its task. It's already storing, uh, what's this? Uh, storing temporarily the, the task or the file that you are working on while it is not yet uh, saved, okay? So storage facility is useful to enable data to be saved for future use. So if you save, uh, example, a document that you're working on, uh, you, you save it with a file name uh, that can already be retrieved for future use. So that's about the hardware. So more of the hardware. So let's identify now the input devices. Here are examples of the input devices. If you can see, we have here the keyboard, the optical scanner, where is the optical scanner? Uh, anything that is used to, to scan, that is the what we call scanner. Next, we have a mouse and joystick. So mouse, you are familiar. You have here also the joystick, okay? Mouse, joystick, uh, and the rest, okay? So touch screen, uh, every time you touch the screen, it respond because touch is already an input. Touch screen is an input device. Okay, so our barcode reader, uh, what's this? Ano pa ba yung ibang, okay, uh, optical, hand, uh, fingerprint scanner, and so on. So they are examples of uh, input devices. Okay, so about output devices, here are examples. So we have here the, the monitor, the, the printer, the headset, Okay, the projector, speakers, okay? So they generate the what we call result. So we, when you enter data, you can see the result. You, you can see the data that you've entered to the computer through your screen. And if you print the data you have entered to the computer, uh, the, the printout is already the what we call output, okay? That is generated by the output devices, which is printer. Okay, so another uh, element is the software. Software is any set of instructions that tells the hardware what to do and how to do it. So without the software, the hardware is, the hardware is useless because it's the software that, that tells or instruct the hardware to do this, do that. Okay, so it is a set of programs that form an interface between the hardware and the software, I mean, the, the user of a computer system, okay? So examples of software include uh, the web browsers, the games, the word processor, the Excel, the PowerPoint, anything, the, any applications which you are using in order for you to perform a specific uh, task or games, okay? So those are uh, examples of uh, the software, okay? So what, what can you see here are examples of uh, software. So there are actually six types of software. We have the system software, the application software, the operating system, utility software, language processors, and connectivity software. What are those, okay? So when we see system software, it is a set of programs to control internal operations, such as reading data from input devices, giving results to output devices, and ensuring proper functioning of components. That's what we call system software. So here are examples of the system software. We have uh, various operating systems here. We have the Windows 7, Windows 8 at this point, I'm using the Windows 10. Uh, AVG, this, that is also an example of a system software. Uh, uh, Mac OS. Linux, okay, so here are examples of the vertical system software. Let's move on to the application software. So application software are programs designed to perform a specific function, such as accounting software, payroll software, and the like. So 
uh, usually uh, we users and the users are uh, availing of the benefit of the application software. Uh, example, I'm using right now the Microsoft PowerPoint in my class. So PowerPoint is actually a concrete example of an application software. Uh, another common application that we use under the application software is the Microsoft Word, okay, and Microsoft Excel, uh, Google Drive, Gmail apps, and the rest of the applications displayed here. They are actually examples of the application software. So let's move on. So operating system. So when we see operating system, there are a set of tools and programs to manage the overall working of a computer using a defined set of hardware components. And that is what we call, again, an operating system. It is the interface between the user and the computer system. So before we can use application software, we must uh, first uh, have this what we call operating system because it's the operating system that allows other applications to be used through our hardware device. Okay, so examples are this uh, Mac OS, okay? Uh, Linux, Windows, and the like, Androids, I mean Android, and uh, other applications, uh, I mean operating system. Okay, so let's move on to the utility software. So when you see utility software, they are actually designed to help to analyze, configure, optimize, or maintain a computer. Just like example, the antivirus. Okay, we have your various uh, antivirus uh, softwares. Certain special purpose programs that are used to perform a specialized task, such as functions to copy, cut or paste files in a computer, formatting a disk and the like. Okay, so that's about the utility software. We have next uh, language processors. So special software to accept data and interpret it in the form of machine or assembly language understandable by a computer. So it also ensures the correctness of language syntax and errors. So that's the what we call language processors. So another is the connectivity software. So when we say connectivity software, that is a set of programs and instructions to connect the computer with the main server to enable sharing of resources and information with the server and the other connected computers. So here is the example of the connectivity software. Okay, so that's about the software uh, element of a computer system. Let's now move on to the people. So the third element which is the most important element of a computer system because without us, the users, the, the hardware and the software can never be useful because we are the ones uh, putting the very purpose of the computer into uh, reality, okay, into functional. Okay, so again, they are the what we call liveware of the computer system. It's we people, okay, who are operating the machine, who are using the computer, or who are uh, enjoying the benefits of this technology. Another element is the procedures. So you see procedure, we have a step-by-step -step series of instructions to perform a specific function and achieve desired output. So once you boot up the computer, uh, you are actually starting the procedure you know, because uh, unless we know how to use the computer, the computer can never be useful, okay? So if we don't know how to make use to start the computer, don't know how to turn it off, uh, the computer will be useless, okay? So we people must also be uh, familiar with the procedure as part or component of the computer system for us to be able to uh, enjoy or make use of the technology to its uh, full, uh, to its uh, was this uh, maximize, I mean, the, the design of this technology. So more of the procedures, we have uh, 
three types of, uh, I mean, we have three types of procedure. The hardware-oriented procedure, it defines the working of a hardware component. Another is the software-oriented procedure. It is a set of detailed instructions for using the software. Okay, so sa hardware, uh, you must know the, the, the procedure of how you are to maybe troubleshoot, okay? Uh, make use. Sometimes I have, uh, nagagalit ako sa students ko kapag, example, they are using the computer. Tapos biglang, ma'am, why is it that the computer are not turning on? Okay, so the very thing that you have to, to, to first do before you complain is to check baka hindi siya na was this na na plug in or baka naka off yung power yung power button niya something like that okay because it's a very uh, first procedure that you are to perform when you start with the computer okay and uh, parang ganun so yung basic lang na the skills in working with the computer must must be was this uh, must be known or must familiar kita okay so that's about the hardware oriented procedure we must be oriented about the the hardware how it works so that our uh, task when we use the technology will be smooth okay and their procedure is about the software oriented procedure so it is a detailed or a set of detailed instructions for using the software so uh, there are software kasi that is already designed or intended for that purpose. So if you don't know how to use it, you can never uh, make the computer useful also. Okay, like we're learning right now or studying, studying ICT for us to be able to learn the, the procedure of how we are to make use this kind of software, something like that. Okay, so that's what we mean by software-oriented procedure because we must know also how to make use the software for us to really uh, 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 make use of, of uh, the computer to its fullest uh, uh, benefits. Okay, so another is the what called internal procedure. So it maintains the overall internal working of each part of a computer system by directing the flow of information. Okay, so... Another important element of a computer system is the what we call data. So when we say data, that's the facts and figures that are fed into a computer for further processing. So just like us, before we can generate uh, an information or a meaningful result, we first have to have this what we call data, or we get ready first with the things that we are to input to the computer before we start working it. Okay, we already identify what to do or what to encode okay, before we use the computer. So when we say data that is a raw, okay, data is raw until the computer system interprets it using machine language, stores it in memory, classifies it for processing, and produces results in conformance with the instructions given to it. So processed and useful data is called information, which is used for decision making. So whatever it is that you have generated through the use of a computer, and if it is already meaningful, that can already be called information. And that can also already be uh, a basis for you to decide, right? Okay. So that's about data. So data comes in many form. It could be picture, it could be text, it could be numbers, illustration. Anything that can generate uh, ideas or that can give us information or that is understandable, okay? We are to put them together to make it meaningful, uh, display it, okay? Or print it after processing. So that's about data. So another important element of a computer system is the what we call connectivity. Connectivity is when two or more computers are connected to each other they, are, they can share information and resources, such as sharing of files, uh, examples, or the data, the music, the video, the movie, whatever it is, uh, whatever form of data it is. Sharing of printer. Okay, so although we have only one printer in a single network, and if we have 10 computers, that 10 computers can actually share a printer. 
Okay, so computer 1 to 10 can print in the same computer. So sharing of facilities like the internet. This sharing is possible using wires, cables, satellite, infrared, Bluetooth, microwave, and transmission, uh, micro microwave transmission, and etc. So that's about connectivity. So I hope you've learned from this video and uh, uh, our first topic will just cover those uh, content and I hope uh, you will uh, learn more in this uh, uh, unit of ours. Okay, so see you next video and in our next uh, class. God bless everyone.